Hi, welcome to the Hard Rock Show. I'm Shane. I'm Andrew. And uh, we've got a bit to talk about. We've been away for a couple of weeks. So. Yeah, my apologies. I've been uh, slightly unwell, you could say. So, But we're on the path to better things now. So we're back into the swing of it. That's it. We're running towards the end of season two, two at the I moment. Guess, yeah. So um, let's get straight into it. I guess we've got a lot to get through. Absolutely. So. As usual, we'll start with the Hard Rock happenings. Yep. Um, now, first piece of news to talk about yes. is one of our favourite Melbourne, Melbourne bands, bands yeah. Yeah. has uh, called it a day. Yep. So, Fast Track, why? <laughs> I, we don't know why. Uh, but Don't know why. It seems to be amicable. One of those mutual things, um, yeah. They've got three dates left to, to play gigs and they're going to do those and then yep. that's that's it and they're pumping the hell out of it so if you get a chance to get down and see these guys make sure you do do it because they do put on a really good show and brad's a psycho with what he gets up to on stage so just absolutely yeah, yeah. he's a nutter he's, he's tiny but he goes nuts <laughs> i believe i haven't got the dates in front of me but i believe the final fast track show ever is the 16th of december at the evelyn hotel sounds about right but, i know the location's correct yeah. i'm not sure about the date but um definitely get onto their facebook page or their website and Check that out and get down to one of these three shows and kiss the band goodbye. Yeah. yeah, this is it for them. So, yeah, like I said, these guys do put on a really good show. So if you do get a chance to see them, then go for it. Absolutely. And yeah. if we don't ever hear from any of the guys again, I mean, if they don't start a new band, we wish them... All the best. Nothing yeah. but the best for yeah. their future. And we absolutely hope to hear from them again in other bands. Well, they have come out and said that they will be out doing other projects and stuff. Now, maybe it's just a creative divergence or something at the end of the day. But, yeah, they do say they're going to be out doing something different in their own way. So, we'll see what comes out of it. And hopefully, we'll be able to keep in touch with them all. So, guys, don't be strangers. (laughs) All right. um, Next, Paul Stanley, the front man from Kiss or one of the front men from Kiss. (laughs) There's been a few. Um, has just undergone vocal cord surgery. Now, that's interesting. Do you know why at all? Or? Uh, I don't know the specific reason, but it's the first time in a 40-plus year career, um, I guess, wear and tear. Sometimes it doesn't take much. Sometimes it can be just you, you get under the weather and you keep performing and you put it under such strain. I got get... the impression that it's something that he's needed to do for a while and he's yeah. just put it off and put it off because Kiss are always touring. Yeah. Um, they're probably one of a handful of bands that have retired 75 times, yeah. but they continue to tour, so, yeah. and, and I welcome it because I'm yeah. a huge Kiss fan and I'll go and see them again and again. Yep. Um, well, you can get things called, I think, polyps on your vocal polyps, cords yep. and stuff, and you have to get those removed, otherwise it can cause serious, lasting damage, but at the same time, the surgery itself can be slightly risky, so... Well, hopefully- he, he's, he's expected to make a complete recovery okay. and... Cool. Should be all good. It's a good prognosis. All, I guess with the money they've made, they can afford the best. So <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, okay, I guess I'll throw one out there now. Now, uh, Stephen Tyler of Aerosmith. This is so not rock and roll. He's uh, had a fall in the shower. <laughs> and he's lost some teeth, cancelled some shows, but he is expected to make a full recovery. Yep. Slightly morbid start to the show, but oh well. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I personally have never once slipped in the shower. Having said that, we'll probably miss another couple of weeks now, but... Um, Having said that, you're yeah. also not pushing the age barrier that no. Stephen Tyler's pushing. True. But, um, yeah, he is expected to make a complete recovery. Yeah. And again, we wish him well. Yeah, another one. So, good luck. <laughs> and Aerosmith, bring your asses to Australia because I want to see you live. Yes, so do I. We've missed out long enough, I think. So, time to get down here. Yeah. Um... Hang on, sorry. On one note, the economy's booming. Come here and make some money. We're one of the few countries in the world where the economy is actually going strong, so... Yeah, and you must yeah. make money here because they charge $160 a ticket here, whereas back in the States, it's only $60 <laughs> a ticket. Yeah, let's uh, not go into that Fucking tangent. Figure so. that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll have that debate another time. Next up is Sammy Hager, everyone's favourite red rocker. Yeah. Has come out and said that he would be interested in managing Guns N' Roses if the original lineup was Maybe to be Maybe this formed. is just sort of a blood nut alliance or something. I don't uh, know. But... I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah. Sammy I don't does know. come out and say some bizarre stuff every yeah. now and then. Hey, yeah. hey, I don't really think that this reunion 
is ever going to happen. Not with the latest comments that Axel's made as well. So <laughs> basically, all that's stopping it from happening is Slash and Axel. And in saying that, I mean Axel. Well, he's never going to bury the hatchet. I reckon no. Slash. All it would take, I reckon, is one apology from Axel if he meant it, and things would be okay again. But Axel won't back down. But honestly, I don't need it. No. Not personally. I'm more but. interested in what Slash is doing with his solo career. I'm more interested in who the hell is going to be the singer of Velvet Revolver. Yeah, that's an ongoing saga. Guns so and Roses. Up. Guns and Roses. I grew up with them. I yep. fucking love them. Yep. Oops, I just dropped the F-bomb. Oh, okay. We're <laughs> getting used to that slowly. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely love them. Yep. And don't get me wrong, I would definitely go and see oh, them. Oh, we'd pay and go and see them. No if problem, they were but. coming out. But I don't need it. I think it's a case of it's been a really long time and so the longer it goes the less you kind of need it so yeah. for me that's what it is and so you just have to wait and see it'll never happen I don't think but you never know when there's that much money being thrown at people strange things have happened that's true probably last all of two shows where they punch on stage anyway but oh <laughs> Um, oh, you got one more to throw out? Yeah, we do. Now, The Worship, who we've covered previously on the show, good friends of ours from uh, Canada, they're going to be recording their next album, which we've already mentioned, Evil Abounds, uh, with Glenn Robinson. Now, he's produced likes uh, of the Foo Fighters, ACDC, Queensryche, more you know, solo artists and things like this. So that's actually a really good land for their sophomore album, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. So congratulations to them, and I'm looking forward to hearing that product because they're saying it's all written and ready to go so off they go to montreal and get it done so guys get it done and let can't, us see what's going on can't wait to hear it yeah um all right moving on to some Recent releases. releases i guess yeah. yeah it's been a few since we last had our episode so yeah um first one uh yeah i think <laughs> most of you would have checked it out by now and Even, most would not like. Yeah, most of you wouldn't like it. No. Um, it's Lulu, the Metallica Lou Reed, Reed slash Metallica project. Yeah. Um, it's crap. Absolutely crap. The View, which is the first song that everybody would have heard, is the highlight of the album. I haven't listened to the thing in its entirety, but what I have heard being around here with you and stuff is... It's not good. It's not good. No. I just want to make sure that everybody realises it's not the latest Metallica record. No, it's not. That, Metallica that's... are working on their next record at that's the moment. Speak, yeah. And this is basically just a stopgap sort of thing. A throwaway side it's, project It's more almost. of a Lou Reed album than yeah. it will ever be a Metallica album. In saying that, there is some really cool Metallica riffs on there. Yeah. That some of them are the fastest and heaviest thing that they've done. And that, since Kill Em All. Yeah, and that bodes well for the new album because when we were listening to it just in the background and stuff, we did say that that's the fastest thing I've heard them do since Kill Em All or yep. Justice or whatever. And, and so there is some really good instrumental moments on there. For me personally, the concept was an interesting idea basing it around the story of some girl and a painting and whatever else have you and the prostitution of the year and whatever else have you. It sounded like a really good concept, the idea. The execution was an absolute failure. I'm just going to say that. To me, it sounds like Metallica is in the room having a jam, throwaway throwaway riffs. Yeah. And then they've let Lou Reed or Crazy Grandpa, as (laughs) I'd like to think of him at the moment, come and dribble shit over the top of their throwaway riffs. And it just does not make for a great album. No. I don't think it was ever going to be a great album. But I did say to you when we were listening to it that I thought that if they'd have had the sort of the quieter sort of more Lou Reed moments in there when he was just talking and and having that interesting sort of music going on and then they'd have a break and then throw to a Metallica based track I reckon that would have worked a lot better and that had potential in that format but otherwise yeah no but anyway that's enough about that yep um another release that I would like to throw out there is the new Jane's Addiction album yes it's called The Great Escape Artist it's it's really cool. It's a. It was a real pleasant surprise. Surprise to me. Yep. Um, they haven't recorded anything for a while, and I wasn't sure what to think of this one. But it is really it cool. Time, yeah. um, it's definitely a James Addiction album. Yep. But it's also just cracked number twelve on the US Billboard two hundred charts. So congratulations. They've obviously done something right. Well, especially after such a long hiatus as well. That's a fairly good yeah. effort to come back in that high. Definitely, I think. 
their last album was 2003 or 2002, something like that. You played that down, that's eight or more years, and that's almost a generation switch when it comes to the people that sort of get into the music at a certain age and stuff. So to have the same following this far on that can push it that high up with the crap music that's being mass produced these days, that's a good effort. So well done to it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now I've got one more, and then... Yep. Andrew can throw a couple out to you. <laughs> yep. uh, Mastodon, yep. The Hunter, sensational. I'm not even going to throw any tracks to you guys. I just listen to the whole thing yep. and just love it because you will. Um, <laughs> they've done some great albums before, yep. Crack the Sky, Blood Mountain, uh, Leviathan. Yep. All awesome albums. This one sort of ditches the whole concept thing that they always go for but still kicks ass. Um, well, you get a lot of... Uh, I guess practice and, and getting to really refine your craft doing a, a, a lot of concept type work to break it up into individual pieces would be liberating in a lot of ways and I think and they probably would have played with that a lot yeah but yeah it's definitely a great album yeah. check it out and let the album speak for itself alright now I've got a couple to throw out there the first one being the new Evanescence album now love them hate them I don't really care I do like these guys they're not bad at all now the new album is just a self titled album so Evanescence not bad now it's not groundbreaking or anything like that but if you are already an Evanescence fan this album will hit all the spots for you there are some good albums uh, good tracks on there so it's worth listening to the whole thing through but not the world's best album but it is a good continuation of their career and considering they've had lineup changes and stuff they managed to keep very much the same vibe which is hard to do especially for a band that's only done three albums so um, it's a good one check it out now the other one is Five Finger Death Punch I love this album. Now, I could rant and rave about this album for ages. Now, we got to thank The Gooch for exposing us to this one, or me personally. Anyway, I hadn't heard anything from them before DJ Gooch from Metal Messiah Radio played that one particular track for us. I forget which one now. But I went and got the album based on that one track alone, and I tell you right now, I was not disappointed, not for a moment. Now, when we were talking about it, I remember your way of describing it, which is really, really fitting, which was Pantera Cross with Disturbed. Yeah. I reckon that's a really fitting description. And if you like either of those two bands, you cannot go wrong with this. And it goes heavy as hell, screaming and stuff, but it also goes right back into some really good laid-back ballad type Real stuff. Real melodic moments. Yeah. And the guy can sing. I don't care how well he can scream. If you can sing, you'll impress me. And this guy can sing. Yeah, he definitely can. Yeah. It is a good album. It's a great album. Yep. I don't think it's as good as their last one. Yep. I really, really enjoyed the last one. Now... I held off on this band for a while. Yeah. I didn't didn't want to check them out. Well, this is my first taste of them, so... But I finally came around and I checked them out and I went, wow, this is cool. Yeah. So... Hopefully, we'll get more good stuff from these guys. And yeah. They do a lot of it themselves as well, so get on and support the bands. But this one, awesome. This one ticks all the boxes for me. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. Um, that's it for the Hard Rock Happenings. Yep. So now we're going to take a look at a film clip by a band that we've covered on the show before. And Double who Wide. Were nice enough to do the Cliff Burton thing for us. Yes. So, yeah. They they did do that. Yep. Um, so they're a much, great band. Yeah. Much love, respect, and we're going to give them a little plug. Good friends of ours from yep. Northern Ireland. So this is Double Wide with Eighteen Wheels of Misery from their debut album, which is called Eighteen Wheels of Misery as well. Check it out. Enjoy.
We're back. That was Double Wide from Northern Ireland with 18 Wheels of Misery. That's an awesome track. Awesome band. Check them out. Worth awesome it. album. Go grab yeah. a copy off iTunes. It's yep. fucking unreal. I love it. Jeez, I'm just dumping that F-bomb everywhere tonight. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on to our feature artist of the week now. Yep. Uh, we've got a band called The Dirty Americans. I could go so many different tangents with that one sentence alone, but I'm going to leave that yeah, alone. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, they're called the Dirty Americans. I yeah. believe they're from Detroit. I believe so, yeah. They're a, they're a part of some uh, Motor City type scene going on, so yeah. Yep. Which, of course, has given us um, Alice Cooper. Yep. Ted Nugent. Yep. And plenty of others over yep. the years. But um, this is a really cool band. It is really good, and it's a really diverse album. It, it goes to your heavy and your soft, and it's really good, solid rock. So Caught me by surprise, to be honest. I wasn't didn't know what to expect with it, um, but it is really cool. I put it on, and if we can just discuss the influences for a minute. Yeah, yep. We've both heard a, yeah. a lot of different things in this album, yeah. which is cool. I'm hearing uh, a, a Soundgarden vibe. I'm also hearing an Audio Slave vibe. Yep. And that's not just based on the vocals, Chris no. Cornell's vocals. No, no. Um, I'm, what else am I hearing in there? I'm hearing a lot of Stone Temple Pilots yes. in there. And that is where the vocals come yeah, into it. that's the vocal influence for sure. Scott yep. Weiland has a huge influence over the vocals on this band. Yeah. In my opinion. And a good influence too. A really good influence. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But I also hear Monster Magnet in there. Yeah. A bit of that 
uh, psychedelic stoner yeah. rock kind of vibe, and it's it's really cool. Well, the two that really stood out for me were the first one was Velvet Revolver, which throws into the Scott Weiland thing again. So we both yep. heard the same thing. And when we talked about before, after you've listed your influences, it, it comes through. But yeah, definitely Velvet Revolver. There are some tracks on there which really could belong on a Velvet Revolver album, which yeah. is credit to the guys because there are some kick-ass songs on there. Another one for me, which might be a little bit of left field, I guess, as they say, um, Nine Inch Nails, in particular the album with Teeth. Now that one, it's not so much the songs, but the way the sounds are done. Yep. Now they, they come through and they sound really, really good and it just works and it's just that little bit of difference. If you could imagine the With Teeth album, sort of more of a rock album, less of the industrial influence of Trent Reznor with the strange sounds he likes to throw in there, just a straight up rock album. I reckon the influence would be a lot easier to hear, but for me personally, I did hear that in there, which was different. I hadn't heard anything like that, so it was really good again different and different is good i love different i just realized that we haven't actually pointed out the name of the album that we're talking about no. <laughs> good point <laughs> it is <laughs> we are talking about their latest album which is called black feather yes and it's it's a very cool album yeah i mean if you're into any of those bands that we've just said we can hear the influences of on this then i would highly recommend well, we're not them excited out. about it we forget the name of the album so there you go <laughs> <laughs> but it's um we should have a look at one of their songs right now. Yeah. Now, this isn't actually on the album Black Feather that we're talking about. No, these guys have been around for a while. Yeah, they've so. got a few EPs, and, yep. and this is their first full-length album, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, but this is a clip called Strange Generation, which is from their EP of the same name, Strange yep. Generation. So, check this out. And um, if you're into this song, then definitely check out that EP, and then grab yourself a copy of Black Feather, because Black Feather is awesome. And if you like their stuff in general, they've got a pretty big catalogue at yeah. the moment. So, yeah, there's plenty to get to. So, if you And like as it, usual, this stuff is all available on iTunes or through the band's website. Or so. Amazon. Their stuff's on Amazon yeah. as well. So And CD Baby and all, yeah. that, sort of, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, this is Strange Generation from um, the Dirty Americans. Enjoy. <laughs>
that was Strange Generation by the Dirty Americans. Yep. Hope you enjoyed that, and I hope it makes you want to check them out because they're a really cool band. They are. The album itself is really, really good. So they were signed to Roadrunner for a while. They were, yes. Um, things sort I of, think it was only a distribution deal, though. Yeah, I'm not 100% was, certain of what it was, but yeah. there is links to them through Roadrunner. If you Google these guys, you'll see Roadrunner yep. over a few of the hits and stuff. But hopefully this full-length album gets them back on the map because it, it is a sign of really good stuff to come and if this yeah. if this is them sort of just getting onto it and getting the ball rolling and really getting into it this is a really good sort of a reboot i yeah. guess in a lot of ways so it's definitely a good standout album so i like this one a lot i would say that the highlights of this album for me yep uh nine to five suicide yep. which is just a cool song that is a cool and it's song, got yeah. lyrics that everyone can relate to yeah about. exactly Basically, not work, in the grind. work a yeah. nine to five job. Yep. And the other one is Ain't Coming Back, which yep. is a bit more laid back of a track. Yep. And I think they're two very good examples of what this band is capable of on the yeah. album. Now, for me, my top two on this album are different to yours. So we found a, out of, I think, 12 tracks or 11 tracks, we found four tracks we both really love. Uh, for me, it's You're a Witch. Now, this is all about some chick that's obviously screwed someone over somewhere and it's a really cool track got a really sort of a grooving and chugging sort of rhythm at the same time it's got a really good sound really heavy drop down guitar sound too on that track which is really nice um, and also they're coming for me which for me is the one that puts me most in mind of Velvet Revolver I do like that track a lot as well so those are the two for me that really stand out on the album I think one of us said it earlier i can't remember if it was actually me or you but <laughs> um one of us said that that this band would suit the fans of the more harder edge it was rock, you that said this earlier yeah but yep. also suit fans of a ra- more radio friendly rock band like a nickelback or, or yeah a three doors down or one of those kind of it's bands. got a really good crossover but it's not yeah. going to piss off either side of the fence no, exactly. so it's a really good uh, so it's a, it's middle good ground thing. i guess but when I say middle ground, that's not a bad thing. It's it's not like they're just sort of riding the fence and hoping they'll get through. They're actually making some really good points, especially yeah. lyrically. But it's just a really good album that just seems to be able to cross over really nicely. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, that's about all we've got time for at the moment. Yeah. So, so um, make sure you check these guys out. They're worth it. Yep. So, um, In the coming weeks on the Hard Rock Show, we've got interviews with The Trues, uh, Shots Fired, Dead Star Renegade. Yep. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up for you, so definitely stay tuned to and the we're show. Always stockpiling more, so it's not going to run out, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So until next time, drink up and rock on. Sorry to tell you, but You've had your a loved massive, one has just had a massive, 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 massive stroke. <laughs> 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 you have slapping on you on the back of the head going, are you stuck? <laughs> no, I just had a stroke. <laughs> just a minor, 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 <laughs> minor stroke. stroke. <laughs> I think we just found our fucking blue for the episode. I think we just probably went into distasteful territory as well.